there's no one else in the entire universe like you, right? So who better to write your story? You may feel like you've been an active participant in the story of your life, and maybe to a certain extent you have, but writing your own story will demand that you step into yourself with a fierce assertiveness. When we allow others to write our stories, we not only give them ownership of the book, but the characters, the title, the plot, and most importantly, the ending. Once I became comfortable with writing my own story, I realized that small changes could lead to dramatic differences. By simply changing the font, the story of your life can take on a whole new meaning. Now, there are four steps I want to share with you regarding changing the font and writing your own story. They are step one, pick your title. Step number two, write a chapter at a time. Step three, be open to edits. And step four, don't skip to the ending. Now, a title can convey a powerful message in just a few words. It tells readers what to expect. It guides and shapes your journey. When reflecting on the title of your life story, ask yourself, what is it that you want your life to be about? What's one thing that describes you? What's your driving force? For example, the title of my story might be From Philly to PhD. It describes my goals, my dreams, my hopes, as well as my accomplishments. Now, the process of selecting your title is, in fact, as important as the title itself. It will demand that you increase your awareness. Instead of just working hard and hoping for the best, why not work towards an enhanced understanding of yourself? Instead of operating from a to-do list, ask yourself, who wrote this list? Was it you? Are you the author of your story? Once we increase your awareness, we're ready for step two. Write a chapter at a time. Have you ever noticed that a large majority of our questions focus on what's next? This starts when we're small children, right? People always say, what do you want to be when you grow up? No one ever asked me what I was doing right there in that present moment. Now, the idea of planning is, is important, but we have not learned how to balance planning with being. The result is a nation full of people who can tell you what's next on their agenda, but can tell you very little about being present. Writing a chapter at a time is designed to help keep you in the present moment. Instead of just, oh my gosh, writing a chapter at a time is designed to help keep you in the present moment. Too often we want to skip ahead a few chapters. I can't wait until I lose a few, little bit of weight, or the kids grow up, or this talk is over. <laughs> but in doing that, we lose the very moments that we are in. Um, so in, in learning how to write a chapter at a time, I would suggest that you do what they say in the South, get still. Once you learn how to get still, you're ready for step three, be open to edits. Being open to edits implies that although we are the main characters on our life stories, ours is a story within a story, and that can be hard to control. Learning to be flexible can help. So enter the concept of homeostasis. Let's say you like the temperature in your house to be in a range between 68 and 72 degrees. One day you come home from work, and it's at 73 degrees. Not ideal, but you may hardly even notice. The next day you come home and it's at 75 degrees. Now you're beginning to notice and you can't quite figure out what's going on or how to make it stop. The third day you come home and it's at 90 degrees. Of course, you immediately notice something's wrong and you frantically work to getting it back within its normal range. This same process of wanting things to be within a normal range happens with our behavior as well. As you start the process, of moving through being open to edits, your body might want to push you back within your normal range. My suggestion when that happens, learn how to float. Now our bodies will relax 
and float when we're in water, but they will not float if we're tense or panicked. As a swimmer, I've watched countless people try to teach folks how to re just relax enough so that you can float. But that person's fear of the water, even while standing in the shallow end, prevented them from doing what our bodies already know how to do, float. Once you learn how to float, you're ready for the last step. Don't skip to the ending. I have tons of friends who are voracious readers. Some of them just grab a book and say, oh, this looks good. Some of it smell it. I don't know who those people are. Some of them smell the book. <laughs> but some of my friends like to skip to the last chapter and read a few pages to see if, you know, they're going to like it, if it's going to grab them. They don't want to be surprised. But skipping to the last chapter can be problematic for several reasons. When you assume you know the outcome of your story, why work towards changing it? When we skip to the last chapter, we say, what I do doesn't matter anyway, so why work? You forfeit the opportunity to create your story. One of the main things that can happen when you try to skip ahead is that you can, in effect, create the outcome you are predicting. In psychology terms, we call this a self-fulfilling prophecy. You may have heard of it. In effect, it means that if you really believe a certain outcome, you will create that outcome at a subconscious level. So let's say, for example, you were slated to play a tennis match against Serena Williams. You, it could happen. <laughs> you might say to yourself, there is no way I'm going to win this match. What will most likely happen is that you will lose the match, not based solely on your ability, well, probably in that case, <laughs> but because you predicted the outcome. You skipped to the last chapter. Not skipping to the last chapter will demand that we start to look at some of the root causes of our anxiety when life throws us a change of plans. When my children were growing up, we lived in a house with an attic. And as life events occurred and changes happened, you know, like they moved out of the car seat or we no longer needed a crib or whatever, we threw all that stuff up in the attic. After 15 years in the same home, we decided it was time to move. As my husband and my children, not me, you notice, as my husband and my children brought things out of the attic, I said to myself, I don't even know what was up there. I have no idea whether we still need that. The same thing happens with our mental addicts. We pack things in our mental addicts that we're not sure what's up there. Part of what we need to do in the last step is to begin unpacking our mental addicts and decide if the rules and the thoughts and everything you've been living by is still useful for you today. The process will be a little messy and it should be uncomfortable, but with some patience, perseverance and support, you should be able to let go of some things that are no longer serving you. Letting go and learning how to write your own story will be a process of creation and recreation. You'll want to pick between your former self and your emerging self. But from beginning to end, through each line, punctuation mark, paragraph, and page, you will become divinely and unabashedly you. My suggestion is that you grab a pencil and eraser and keep it handy because rewrites can and, and may occur daily. And finally, I hope you're prepared to be unprepared for your incredible journey. Thank you. <laughs>